Welcome back to Movies Outpost. Today we'll be diving into an action crime thriller movie titled Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. Without further ado, make sure you're comfortable and as always enjoy the recap. The movie kicks off in London where our main man John Patrick Ryan is sitting on a park bench. He gets up and makes his way to class. But on the way people start rushing around him and a small panic takes place. After being told about a commotion in the London School of Economics, he enters to see everyone staring at a TV. It was one of America's first times ever receiving a blow of this magnitude. Eighteen months later, John is deployed and alongside his comrades they fly in a chopper. Seems John personally requested this detail and as he speaks to his commanding officer a private tries buckling up. Out of nowhere a missile hits the chopper which causes it to go haywire and lose control until everything cuts to black. Lieutenant Ryan awakens to being carried inside a med lab where the doctors do whatever they can and have a 90 minute window to operate on him before he loses his legs. The doctor says he'll never fight again and that's when we're taken to the Walter Reed Army Medical Center where Ryan undergoes rehab from the horrific tragedy. After falling, the doctor named Kathy Muller tries her best to encourage her patient which she names as Jack Ryan to get up and keep going. In the meantime, Thomas Harper discusses with a doctor on how Jack's been there for eight months and may never walk without the crutches. Harper determines that Jack needs a leap in the right direction and leaves him be. Some while later, Harper walks in on Jack and identifies himself as Commander Thomas Harper, U.S. Navy. He thanks Jack for his services and asks him if he wrote liquidity events and post-Soviet markets as well as filing three separate reports on traffic patterns in and out of the Sabir Bridge and commends his work before walking away. Jack asks how he knew this intel and Harper whispers he's in the CIA. That night, Kathy finds Jack outside to tell him that she's completed university and moving on. Jack wants to eat some dinner with her, and she promises him that if he can run his way out she'll agree to it. As she leaves, Jack immediately gets to training and runs around the rain to find Harper sort of stalking him. Harper asks why Jack didn't finish his PhD and the answer he receives is that he wanted to join the Marines. Harper is yet again impressed and tells Jack there is another way he can serve his country. He elaborates by saying he wants Jack to complete his doctorate, join the Financial Intelligence Agency as an analyst, work for a series of private banks on Wall Street where he'll use that position to uncover funding for terror groups. No one can ever know about this including his employers, lovers or anything of the sort. Ten years later in New York City, Jack is going to work and links up with his friend Teddy Hefferman. Once inside, Jack listens to news on Wall Street and hears how Russia is opposed to a new Turkish pipeline which could see Russian dominance in economic exports shatter. At the UN headquarters, representatives of Russia as well as America speak with each other and the US refuse to withhold on their project which makes Russia see this as an act of economic war. Jack meanwhile looks at a company named Cherevan Group and sees the funds transfer are anonymous and corrupted. Jack sends a message on his phone to meet at the movies, and the scene cuts to the cinemas where he links up with one of Harper's men and mentions their Russian partners are hiding accounts from them and hands him some files. The man tells Jack Harper will want him in Moscow and leaves the cinemas. That night, Jack meets up with his partner Kathy. The two share a nice meal where Jack cannot concentrate and keeps watching the news. Kathy tells him that she wants to go see a movie with him, and that's when the scene cuts to Moscow. A billion-dollar business tycoon that goes by the name Viktor Cherevan is called. He immediately heads down to meet up with Minister Sorokin who tells him the vote for the pipeline ended badly. He asks Viktor if he began moving his assets and receives confirmation. The minister then mentions the Kremlin must remain distant from his activities, and that's when Viktor asks if it's time for the operation to commence, and Sorokin mentions the Kremlin has no idea of any such operation. Back in New York, Jack speaks to his boss Rob about how he needs to head to Moscow, as there are hidden accounts all around the world. Rob quickly realizes the severity of the situation but also tells Jack to not ruin the relationship with their most lucrative partner. That night Jack gets into a fight with Kathy when she discovers he went to the cinemas and thinks he might be having an affair. He comes and tries clearing up the mess by offering to take her to Paris once he's finished work in Moscow. Soon enough Jack arrives in Moscow and a private security worker for Cherevan Group named MB Dang picks him up from the airport. He escorts him outside and into his car where they drive to the hotel Jack will be staying at. Once the two register their names, they head upstairs into one crazy room. As Jack looks at the view, he hears a gun and ducks to a bullet flying his way. Emby tries gunning him down but misses all his shots. Jack runs into the bathroom and locks the door behind him, but Emby Deng reloads and fires more shots before breaking into the bathroom. He looks around and fires bullets into the shower only to realize Jack was above him who jumps down. The two get into close quarter combat and Emby injures his head on a toilet seat. He continues fighting though and tries to use a rope to finish off Jack but Jack shoots next to his ear and disorientates him long enough to slam him into the bathtub and turn the water on. He holds down his attacker long enough for him to eventually die. Confused and in shock he escapes the hotel room, and with adrenaline pumping in his veins, gives a call to a woman and says there is a body in his hotel room, and decides to ignore Kathy's call. 
The woman says to maintain the room and in 20 minutes, once he hears two rings, leave the hotel. She sends him an address to head to afterwards and Jack confirms that he understands. Once inside his room Jack can do nothing but wait. The phone eventually rings twice and he quickly runs off. Walking through the streets of Moscow paranoia sets in as Jack eyes a taxi out until Kathy calls once again. This time he answers and lies through his teeth telling her that he just landed and had a little nap. Problematically the taxi from earlier made another lap around and while Kathy talks about Paris, he is distracted and mentions Paris might be off the table at this point and says he'll call her back in the morning before leaving a disappointed Kathy alone. Later, Jack arrives at Staraya Square, the meetup point where he discovers Harper in the flesh. Harper notices that Jack is shaking with adrenaline and calms him down by mentioning his own story of his very first kill, how he accidentally killed a bystander that came up behind him too quick. Harper then wants a memo on all the events that took place and Jack starts by saying he noticed accounts in their Russian partners' records which he was denied access. It was massive currency accounts all in US treasuries, and Cherevan has made a total commitment to the US dollar even in bad economic times. As the dollar should be going down it instead is going up a couple cents each day for the past week. Jack believes there is a coordinated plot from Russia to collapse the dollar as well as the US economy. He further explains that when the Russians start to sell the rest of the world would follow suit. The aftermath is that Russia will recover but the US won't as they don't have much oil reserves. Panic will quickly ensue on America, and it will be the second greatest depression. Jack explains that an attack will also have to take place as the sell-off occurs, and these massive dumps will already be planned in Cherevan's system, and an audit will give him the exact minute they plan on doing this. He is then handed a gun by Harper and told he is no longer just an analyst before being left alone. After returning back to his luxurious hotel room, everything is back to how it once was with no evidence of the killing that took place. The next day is a very important day. Victor walks through the streets of Moscow and gets a call about the audit to take place. At Cherevan Group, Jack walks in and goes through the building until he is found by Cherevan's assistant who says he is waiting for him. After a quick face scan the two go through the building and up an elevator where Victor comes face to face with Jack. Jack gets directly into it and says he's here for a routine audit as there are concealed accounts. Victor is quite smart though and tells Jack that he ordered the companies that concerned him to be unnecessarily sold in profit and hands him his firm's percentages in a detailed report to which their funds were already transferred to them. Victor mentions that partnerships are delicate and Dimitri, the head of security, will escort him out. They both shake hands and Jack asks if he could take him to an apologetic dinner and Victor says that he'll pick him up instead. He then asks if Ryan's wife will be joining their dinner, and Jack is quite confused and says he'll see. Once he leaves Victor says he is a very dangerous man and Jack quickly dodges his tail. Harper is there to pick him up and is informed that Cherevan sold their assets to other shell companies. He tells Harper he invited Victor to dinner and wants someone to break into his office to find the algorithm and how to hack it only to realize Harper wants him to do it. But a massive problem is put in the works when Jack finds Kathy at his hotel room wanting an immediate explanation why he has a gun. He simply walks up to her and says he's in the CIA and Kathy is so proud of him she just hugs him. Back to Cherevan Group, Victor speaks with his secretary to confirm that the attack will happen tomorrow and to get both the cell orders and assets ready. In Michigan, a Russian family listens to a sermon and it seems they have all been activated. They head straight home and start burning everything when the son Alexander leaves to take care of some evidence. But weirdly enough he is being followed and notices this. He quickly sprints and catches up with the car to ask the man something before instantly killing him. He then picks up the man's wallet to discover he is an FBI agent. In Moscow Harper says that Kathy should join the dinner as it will look suspicious if she does not. Jack despises this idea and Kathy begins telling him off that by not telling her who he was she got involved in this mess. Harper shuts them both up and tells Jack he does not need to break into Dimitri's computer, just in the office next to his where he will use a plug-in to access the building's electrical wiring to open Dimitri's hard drive. They will need five minutes to do this, and Kathy must be the one to stall Victor at dinner. With that the couple head out to dinner. On their way Jack tells Kathy she forgot her ring back at the hotel and puts it on her finger. Once the duo finally arrive, they enter the restaurant where Victor and Kathy are introduced to each other. Harper meanwhile watches Dimitri finish up work for the day. He quickly informs Jack that it's time to get the job done, with that, Jack begins playing up and acting quite not so sober. Victor then speaks of why he keeps a grenade in his office, a reminder of how he survived a hand grenade supplied by none other than the CIA. Both Jack and Kathy then get into a fake fight where she gets up and wants Jack to escort her to the restroom, but Victor instead offers his services. Simultaneously, one of Harper's men bumps into Victor to steal his wallet and hand it to Jack. Once Dimitri completely leaves the building, Jack goes to leave, but Victor returns and Jack is forced to speak to him and ask dumb questions to which Kathy wishes to go for a walk. Victor does not allow it though and tells Jack he needs to go get some air. Jack giggles and walks outside the building but not before a guard is ordered to follow him. 
On the street, Jack heads directly into Cherevan Group and once inside, scans Victor's card and manages to pass the face scanner as one of Harper's plants is watching over him. Back at the restaurant, the two have a chat with one another just as Jack reaches the top level to just barely avoiding the secretary there. Once inside the office, Harper watches Jack put the plug-in inside the wall and begin his work to hack his way into the server. Problematically though, Dimitri is alerted to a security breach in his office and comes flying back. They have three and a half minutes to get the job done and Kathy smartly enough deduces that Victor has stage 3 cancer and only has a few months to live. Victor ignores his secretary's call as he is astounded by the doctor's awareness and brilliance. He talks about his dead son and wife as Jack runs into an issue as he needs an executive access code and calls Rob to get it for him. Unaware of what Jack is doing he gives it to him which allows the team to penetrate the system. Harper then tells Jack to exit immediately as Dimitri just pulled up and is heading upstairs. Jack finally finds the information he was searching for, and copies the data onto a drive before running into Victor's office to use his private elevator to escape the approaching men. Jack loses connection to Harper while going down and Victor's secretary meanwhile runs into the restaurant to alert her boss of the situation. He just stares at Kathy and realizes he is being played. Harper in the meantime is forced to take out a sniper and provide cover fire for Jack to get to the ground. After bolting down the stairs he reaches ground level and hands the drive over as well as Victor's card which is returned to him just as Jack sees him. Dimitri then appears and his men search Jack and find nothing. When he sees Victor has his card and wallet, the couple leave, and Victor wants them followed. Harper and his team quickly download the data and Dimitri puts it on Victor telling him that drinks and girls ruined him and that his son would be ashamed. Victor does not like the criticism and puts multiple bullets into Dimitri. Back with the duo they arrive at the command base where they are uploading the data to the CIA headquarters. Jack tells them the attack is tomorrow at 9.06am and there will be almost a $2 trillion wipeout. Their only hope is to stop the terrorist attack from occurring in the first place and out of nowhere Kathy's car is rammed into and the base is shot from outside. A gunfight ensues and Kathy is dragged into the Russian's car as Jack tries to save her with Harper providing cover fire, but it doesn't work. With no other alternative Jack takes over the enemy vehicle and goes to chase Kathy's kidnappers while Harper begins tracking the ring Jack gave Kathy earlier. They direct Jack to the exact route to take but problematically though, Victor jumps into Kathy's car and gives Jack a call threatening him not to upload the information. Jack says he has the drive and has not yet uploaded it while speeding to his coordinates. Victor is annoyed though and starts to torture Kathy while making sure Jack can hear. He once again talks about the sacrifices his country has made, the blood it has bled, and he refuses to let that be in vain. As Jack is about to turn the corner to find his attacker, he runs into a van and just watches as his fiancée drives away while her kidnapper speaks once again about his dead son and his sacrifices. Jack does not give up though and sprints down the road and pulls off a fucking outstanding move to knock the enemy driver unconscious and into a car. He quickly runs up to it and saves Kathy while giving Victor a nice punch. He and his team immediately evacuate and leave Moscow within minutes. Harper's team quickly discover Alexander and rush his house to discover the contents inside burnt. Jack then tells Harper that Victor kept mentioning his dead son but maybe he isn't dead. They look into it and quickly discover that Victor signed his son's death and the same boy entered the United States that same year. While they look into Alexander and his life, Alexander picks up another body and steals a van. Jack meanwhile manages to find the owner of the second signature on the death certificate, and as they keep on researching, Jack tells Harper that Alexander is in a barn at Pennsylvania. Harper calls in the FBI as Alexander sets up a massive bomb in the back of the van. The team then dig into Alexander's fake parents account and discover that the attack will happen in New York on Wall Street. Just then, the FBI raid the shed to find discarded tags, auto paint and even paint thinner. Once Harper and his team arrive on the ground, multiple helicopters wait for them and while Kathy is taken away, Harper and Jack head to Wall Street. Wall Street meanwhile is in mass panic and evacuation mode. Victor watches the US dollar from Moscow and Jack gets onto the scene. With hundreds of police officers and soldiers on site, Jack thinks something isn't right. He begins touching the cop vans and watches them carefully to see one of them having fresh paint on it. He calls out to Harper who cannot hear him and coincidentally finds Teddy there and steals his bike. With a couple minutes to the cell orders, Jack speeds towards Alexander and alerts Harper that he is headed underneath the buildings not towards it. And just as he says this, Alexander goes into an underground tunnel and Jack follows suit. Harper is then told a bomb detonation underground will collapse at least six or seven buildings. At this point Jack is their only hope, however he is knocked down to the ground. Once the fake cop van plunges underwater it stops directly under the greatest blast amplification point. As Alexander sets up the timer Jack attacks him from behind. With water gushing all around them they both fight as their lives literally depend on it. Victor watches how the cops have discovered his son's plan but he still holds the orders. His son in the meantime is having a straight fist fight with Jack who manages to pin him on some chains. As the cops approach the underground tunnel from all directions, they see no van there and Jack is already one step ahead and says the bomb will kill thousands of people with its radius. As he heads to the water he notices Alexander trying to trigger the bomb and so he swings the van left and right to try and stop him. It doesn't work though and as the timer is about to be overridden, Jack locks in the wheel and physically attacks Alexander. 
Both fight literally centimeters off the ground until Jack just jumps out as the van falls off a bridge and into the water below which causes an enormous impact. Victor just stares at a frame of his Napoleon portrait and is told he needs to meet with the minister. Once he arrives he is instantly gunned down and dies, suffering the same fate as his son. Kathy then finds her beloved in the hospital and all is forgiven, and everything is better than before. Later, Jack and Harper sit outside an office and are called inside. The duo get up to meet none other than the President of the United States and the movie cuts to black. Thanks for sticking until the end. If you enjoyed this recap, leave a comment on what movie you'd like to see next and as always see you on the next one.